Hello again, Actic Gear in Votom's fans. Uh, boy, when I first started collecting these, I just thought I'd end up with 10. But the, apparently Takara Tomitek has released a lot of variations of these uh, Votom's robots. Uh, it's quite fascinating. So I found this one, and it's called Palesin Files 04. So I did a little search. Palesin Files was an original animation that supposedly in the timeline of Votoms occurred before the original TV series. So it kind of explains how the main character, I guess, came about. But I haven't really seen anything of it other than maybe one episode on um, YouTube. But uh, Wikipedia says this is their first use of computer graphics animations. And it does show that on YouTube. So it actually looks pretty cool. I'm going to have to try to watch some more if I can find more episodes. Okay, anyways. <coughs> Takara Tomi. Uh, 148 scale, and this says Actic Gear AGPF04, so Palesin Files 04. So all these robots, I guess, are specific to that particular animation. We have uh, something called the Scope Dog ISS Custom, and frankly, I couldn't find much of that other than the fact it was in a video game. So, and then we have something here called the Dog Carrier, and on MAHQ, it's basically just a trooper troop transport for one of these robots it looks kind of goofy here but see that looks like a cartoon so I don't know if that's from a cartoon or not uh, instead of it's not a CGI though no, it's anyways let's see what else we have on this box mm -hmm. Sunrise owns the boat Tom's franchise Nice uh, promotional picks here. It's basically like a gray scope dog with a 12 missile pack and some sort of, well, it's according to this, a gyro balancer on it. And and what the heck is an AUT MP94? Oh, maybe that's the backpack. So a special backpack. And then this says new weapon file 04. So I think uh, there's obviously three other ones before this one, and they have some sort of weapons that haven't been done in the Actic Gear line before. So let's get this open. Some uh, legal jargon here. Oh, yeah, DVDs. Oh, I think this actually might have come with a DVD, perhaps. Well, I don't have it, so. Bring this in there. All right, let's get this one open first. No tape. Look at this dog carrier. It's quite big, actually, larger than I thought it would be. It's painted like a gunmetal, but also the plastic looks like it's metalized, like a metalized gray, kind of like uh, you know what Hot Wheels does. You can see the swirl line there. So I'm not really a fan of metalized plastics. <clears throat> uh, boy, I don't know. Maybe this thing's powered by a gas tank, and these tubes, see, they're running over to you know the sides toothpick here. A couple of uh, recessed vents or something down there. I'm not sure why. There's like a just a, a bench there maybe for human beings to sit on. Some greebly effects there. Panel details and stuff like that. Some nice handrails. They're actually, you know, not blanked off so that's kind of neat. And then uh, some more rails here sticking out on the side. It's got some thrusters on the side here but only in the back. It's kind of weird. Maybe these are supposed to be thrusters too. And then obviously we have the horizontal thrusters to probably send it that direction. Or maybe both, because the skis or the skids seem to go in both directions. But I think these are separate pieces. Yeah, look, it even just fell off. So <clears throat> I guess if you want to repaint this, it'd be pretty easy to do. And then we have, uh, this is nice. We know how old this toy is, 2006, and who made it. So that's kind of neat. All right, uh, did these come off? No, they don't. All right, not much to it, I guess. We just gotta wait for the robot itself. So starting with the basic scope dog here, we have, uh, what's nice is this ISS printing. So something in this storyline of Pales and Files has something to do with ISS. This is a very bright silver tampo print. It's not a decal, it's paint. And then this robot itself is using this metalized gray plastic. You can see all these tiny flakes in the, the plastic. It's quite interesting. This is my first Votoms robot that has a metalized plastic. So it's definitely unique. But the actual casting looks familiar. Uh, I'll pull out some other Votoms at the end of this video. 
So the visor obviously goes up and down, the optics can spin, and you can also move these within the slot left and right. The antenna can pivot up and down, it is fragile, you don't want to drop this, it'll break. The head also can spin, and then the cockpit, if you pull towards the back, the whole hinge lifts up, and then you can see, you know, there's nice little interior details, some pipes, some uh, buttons, and all that stuff. But it's all the same color, no separate color there. Uh, this torso here, they went and painted this section a gunmetal gray, so it's nice they added paint there. But on the arms and the legs, it's just, uh, I think, no, I think those are painted as well, so that's nice. Okay, let's pop this thing back down for now. I'm going to have to add some parts that are in this bag a little later. All these little armor plates here do articulate, and the reason why is there's a crouch down mode on these little uh, things. So, like, these are walking tanks. That's what Votoms are. Hold on, I'm trying to loosen this hinge. It's a little tight. I don't know why. I'm trying to rotate this back. I want to show you guys the crouch down mode. Boy, I don't know why that thing will not spin. It'll go in and out, but I cannot. Alright, there we go. Well, that thing's tight. Alright, so I'm moving that like back. I guess this is a brand new toy. That kneecap just fell off. I'm going to have to crazy glue that back on because I'll lose it. And then the legs. This thing will actually pivot out. I have to like pull and oh boy, there goes that kneecap as well. And also these things fall off as well, the elbow armor. So I'm gonna glue all those on later. There we go. So that leg comes out like that. Listen, you'll see there's some screws holding that piece together. And so essentially this thing is supposed to crouch down. And that's what allows the people to get in and out of the cockpit a little bit easier. This is, supposed to, this is a foot, a foot uh, step, I guess. And there's a, a hand grab I'm going to put in here. So that's the crouch sound mode, the landing mode, if you will. All right, but I never really display them that way, so I'm going to pop this all back together. You got a big uh, hinge here, joint, and it's uh, got a ball peg for the foot. So a lot of articulation there. The, this rear wheel does spin. That, that actually spins, but this does not. It's just molded in and it's painted. Uh, these little spikes here for pivoting or stopping, they do come down, so that's really neat. The little armor plate here for the ankle moves out of the way. Uh, this, this little thing moves out. Alright, so a wheel and thruster comes out of these uh, Turbo Customs. Yep, there we go. So, I don't know, I guess that maybe helps it go even faster as it zips along the ground. This wheel doesn't move, though, I don't think. No, it does. My mistake. Look at it. It's even a separate piece. But uh, tiny, tiny bumps are holding that in. I have a feeling that's going to get lost one day. It might be advisable to actually glue that in place. But the thruster here has some metallic paint on it, so it looks pretty good. Alright, let me get this leg back up. So the knee is... Uh, I think it's a double jointed because there's a joint way up here as well. Yep, it's a double jointed knee, so you can actually have it bend back pretty far for a robot. Okay, and then uh, these little ammo canisters they can come off and probably be swapped out. Yep, see the arms, decent articulation. The hands have these little pegs and they can come out through the side slot here. And then the forearm actually slides out because there's like a punch mechanism. Okay, the little armor plate's going to go here later. And then yes, this will fall off. I'm going to glue that in place later. Uh, the bicep has a swivel. It's just a single joint here for the elbow, so it only bends 90 degrees. The armor here for the shoulder is articulating separate from the actual shoulder itself, which is on a ball peg, so rotate and all that stuff. So it's a really good amount of articulation, as you can see, if you look at my other videos on Arctic Gear. Yeah, I, I go over all the same stuff. It's a, it's a standard scope dog, although this looks different. I've never seen this side plate on uh, any of my other ones. 
So it's got some like gravely effects in there, some sort of radiators or plumbing of some sort, and a screw obviously holding that together. So that's, uh, it's not very loose, which is nice. I don't feel I'm going to lose that very easily. But the knees, yes, the knees and elbow pads, I will. In fact, I'm going to go and glue those on right now. Hmm, one thing I never noticed on my other Turbo Customs is there's actually details inside this little recess. Like hoses and stuff like that. Anyways, I'm going to pop that wheel back in because I'm afraid I'll lose it. But I went and glued these things on, the, those little pads there. Alright, let's look inside this baggie and see what uh, other parts we have to put on this guy. The instructions and all that stuff. <clears throat> Backing cardboard that I just thrown out. There's a little cardboard name thing you can fold into a triangle. I don't really bother doing that though. Sorry. Then we have uh, looks like a DVD promotion maybe 2009. Yep, six DVDs, the Paleson files. Oh yes, I see. I have a feeling. A DVD comes with these figures, so you can get, well, I don't know, there's different stuff, because these are 120th scale, 120th, 124th scale, but these are the active gears, the small ones. Well, I can't read Japanese, so I can't help you, sorry about that. What's this thing? I'm not sure. Well, anyways, you can pause and try to translate it. Comes with a little index card that goes into a special binder and uh, tells you all the stats in Japanese, unfortunately, and it gives you some scenes, I think. No, no scenes from the TV show or the movie. I don't know what this is. Some sort of beacon. Hopefully, it's in this uh, plastic part. So here's the instructions, and oddly, there's no date here. Historically, there's a date on the instructions, but I don't see it. All right, so let's see. Yeah, I gotta put together all these things, which I will do. Yeah, alright, some bits that go on there. Nothing on the back. Okay, well, luckily there's a date on the actual dog carrier, so you have an idea of how old the toy is, even if you don't have the original packaging. Assuming you buy them together. So, so it looks like we have this uh, gyro thing already made. It's just hanging loose in the bag, which is kind of weird because it looks like it's two or three pieces, but it's already done. Same with the backpack. It was just loose in there. So maybe this, maybe this was used and someone actually put this together already. I'm not sure, but it looks like you can put this little gyro on either side. But I think on the, it's supposed to be on this side, basically, and the rocket pod is on that side. So I gotta go and add the uh, hooks and all that stuff to this thing. So you might want to fast forward. Well, hold on. I, uh, you might want to look at these pieces before I cut them all off. There's actually a different paint app already on this rifle, but the hands have um, the, uh, the handles and hands are all molded as one piece. They all have this metalized gray plastic color. These things fill up the screw holes in the back. It looks like some of the additional armor plates. Yeah, some hoses, some hanging hooks. This is the grab rail that goes on the torso. Uh, and then we have the character that can go into the cockpit, which is nice, but requires a lot of paint. Okay, looks like... And then the, the rocket pod is already painted, at least on the front face. It's got some red and gray there, so... Uh, you might want to fast forward. I'm going to put all these things together.
Okay, you can see there's a whole bunch of extra parts. I didn't bother putting the gun hand on because I've seen this gun so many times I'm not even going to pose it with, with this gun. But, uh, yeah, it's a lot of duplicate parts. You know, this little knee hose. It's nice because I can use it in case I break one on a different robot. Yeah, an extra set of these pat, you know, armors for the wrist. And then these belong on a different scope dog. They usually go back here. But uh, this particular one, I don't I don't see the actual holes for this. So this is for a different scope dog. Uh, for some reason, you want to mount the rocket pod on this side. You could. You just swap out, you know, this part here. And those big circles, I thought, that went into the back were not the case. They're just plugs, I think, for the backpack if you don't put anything onto the sides. So the backpack here, you can see there's two extra cartridges and stuff here. And then, yeah, you can pivot the uh, rocket pod. So that's all right. Uh, you can, I guess, pivot this little ray dome thing. But uh, I'm not sure why you do that. And I've never seen these little D-rings on the shoulders before. Uh, the standard ones are just that. You know, it's literally like a D-shape. But this is like a, it's got like an extra bolt detail, so I, I put those on because it's just different for me. And it's just got an open hand here, yeah, extras on the other side. So yeah, uh, the one last thing is this. I don't know what these are. Uh, looking at the instructions, I see. Yeah, I don't see anywhere to put these. I don't know what they are. <laughs> Well, anyways, it's always nice to have extra bits in case you lose stuff, right? So that's all the extra parts you get, so it's really nice. All right, so now as far as putting this on this little dog carrier thing, just based on the image I see, the jetpack, well, you know, this is backwards. Look at this uh, JPEG here. Hold on here. Looks like the rocket thruster is in the back, but these, it's, unless you can rotate them, which I don't think it can. No. It's interesting. So I guess this, this dog carrier is a little bit different than that animation one. But I have a suspicion the robot's supposed to sit here. Uh, just because of the amount of space there. I have a feeling the crotch actually sits right in between those two things. So let me let's try to do this now. Again, i got to convert the thing. But now we got this big backpack. Oh, look at this. Now the backpack will articulate upwards and so you can still leave the backpack on and have the thing crouched down. So armor plate goes up. Yeah. I pulled a crazy glue with these kneecaps on so I don't have to worry about those things falling off and getting lost. Oh, but now the whole backpack just fell apart. So the legs, oh, that's what that little shelf was for. It's not for humans, it's for the back of the feet to kind of like just get trapped in there. So those things get trapped there and then the goal is to try to get this torso piece. Uh, there's not much of a friction fit though. It's definitely meant to hold this, but there's no like grabbing, which would have been nice to have. Like if there was like a little bit of a lip on this thing and this had teeth on it. So you're not going to be able to hold this thing upside down. And now this little shoulder piece fell off as well, besides the actual arm falling off. Alright, but you can see the backpack totally clears the back of the legs. So that's kind of neat. Yeah, boy, these things are just little friction fits, but they're not molded very well. There's not much tension. You might want to take some heat to it and make it tighter, this little gap. See, that's very loose right there. Yeah, so, let's see, this one fell off as well. These are exceptionally loose. I'm going to just leave it off for now. I see, look at this, the whole side of the backpack fell off. So, I might have to crazy glue that in place now as well. Yeah, that's kind of loose. Alright, well, sadly, you know, it would 
the front end isn't locked in place, so you can't do this. But, yeah, it's very loose. I think if you put some poster putty, that would be advisable if you actually want it to, you know, remain in this position all the time. Because the gravity of this just isn't much, you know, it's not a very heavy uh, toy model here, so it doesn't have much weight to it. But, that is apparently the way it's supposed to look. <laughs> supposed to. Getting that crotch down again. Yeah, it doesn't really want to... Boy, fidgety, fidgety. Actic gear is high detail, but very fidgety. There you go. Alright, I think that's as low as I can get that torso. So, maybe a second actic gear could stand back here. But you definitely have to, like, poster putty that person down. Really, you have to poster putty this front one as well. You know, let me go get another actic gear. Alright, well, I got this uh, other scope dog. This one's called the Odin, Odin Research Scope Dog. I don't know this back end story of that, but that's another gray one, but it's not metallic as you can see. It's quite a different color scheme. There's just enough room to fit those two feet there. So I think only regular scope dogs would fit in here. I don't think you're going to be able to get anything with like clogs, like a, or like a standing tortoise or snapping turtle on there. <clears throat> this is a Weeman Squad scope dog. And then this is a, a Red Shoulder Custom. I think it's called a Red Shoulder Turbo Custom. So, <coughs> you can see this is a 3x3, three three, but this is a 4x3, so it's a different missile pod entirely. So yeah, all these little variations are quite interesting. Yeah, let me get these two out. One thing I want to also note, I took a lighter to those little D-rings, this plastic is so thin and soft that it, like, it melted immediately, so I wouldn't suggest using a lighter. It's just too powerful. I would suggest using maybe a hair dryer or possibly dipping in hot boiling water to bend it because you will just melt right through that plastic. I messed up those D-rings, so, but they are tight. They're not going to fall off, but they don't really look smooth anymore, of course. But I don't want to put the other ones on, like those standard ones. All right, well, let's let this thing just spin on its own. Let's get a lower angle here for you guys. So it's a cool one. I know there's other uh, Actic gears with other vehicles, so I'm going to order a few of those. And uh, so the, the Actic gear train will continue along. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you the next time we talk about Votoms.